good morning, good day, or good evening, wherever in the world you may be at this point in time as I'm recording this video. This is your boy, Turgon, the wise guy, coming at you with a new video today. <clears throat> and I'm here to talk about my thought process and best practices as it pertains to conscription of units based upon the commanders that I have at my disposal. I want to convey my best practices over to you in hopes that it might make you think a little differently about how you go about conscripting your troops. Which troops do you conscript? How many do you conscript? How do you manage your resources? What you, commanders do you have you, uh, available to utilize those units? They all, all these concepts kind of flow together. So I'm gonna do a quick kind of review of my comms just to give you an overview of what I have available to utilize in terms of commanders. And then I'm gonna walk you through my barracks and how I go about choosing which units I can script and show you a little bit about, or talk to you a little bit about utilization of my resources to enable my conscription habits. So, as you can see, um, I am Turgon the Wise. I play currently on a team called Loki, the Lost Kingdom. Really, really fun team, good team, strong leadership, strong team. Really enjoyed my time playing with this, with this fine group. And we are a few hours away from hitting five weeks into our season. This is my seventh season playing Lord of the Rings Rise to War. We're playing as Arnor. And let me show you what I have for commanders available. <clears throat> Here you see my main commander is Gilgalad, a.k.a. Gilly. I have him at level 50. He's been level 50 for a week or two now. And he's by far my strongest and most versatile commander. And I love this commander. I use the Elven White Knife to boost his might and attack for elves, as well as an additional 8% damage for elves. That stacks with the Silver Harp of Revendell, his accessory. Another 8% for 16% with room to grow. The Silver Harp also increases damage, might, and focus. Additionally, I have his chest, another 15 army defense to elves, might, focus, speed, and I mitigate 20% burn, poison, and focus damage. Also, I run with the Hunter's Guide with the Aegis trait. Aegis? Aegis? However you want to pronounce it. Uh, Two-thirds of a chance to gain stun or and madness immunity for the first four, four rounds of every fight. It's a really, really strong combination. The raw stats uh, also give you some attack to ranged and more might and focus. Uh, I'm not going to walk through my talents because I change them constantly dependent upon which opponent I'm facing. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of a gilly, I'm not going to do this for any other commander, but currently I have him configured kind of for what I like to use when I'm going against Theodens. And I use this build because with the Kingly Kin, you've got the Evasion, you've got the plus 10 to Elf Defense, you've got another 14% uh, damage to all allied units. I also run with the High King, uh, which reduces damage received by Elves by 15%, and boosts their health points by Three, the base stat, and then Chaotic Retreats. Uh, he's reducing enemy unit defense by 35, and for Elven Leader, a 25% chance to gain follow-up for all Elven units every round. Now, <clears throat> those are pretty much standard uh, for what you're going to see on Gilgalad. The uniqueness of this configuration is I have Icicle, which is going to stun an enemy unit for a round after round two. And then in round three, I'm going to stun the commander. Well, there's a 28.6% chance to stun them for two rounds. I also threw six points in white council, so I'm going to mitigate 7.6% damage on the first instances of damage incurred by all allied units. 
<clears throat> which is really good. I, I choose this build against Theoden because if the stun goes off, um, then that's Theoden not doing anything in round four. And of course, you at the very minimum want to have one point in the Icicle, no matter what build you're going in, just for that um, that stun on one enemy unit in the second round. I'll shift stuff around constantly. If I'm facing a, a damage dealing commander, I'll put eight points in Icicle and four points in Dazzle to try to get more stun against them. I'll take these six points out of White Council to do that. If I'm going against a Witch King, I'm going to take these points out of Kingly Kin. I'm going to I'm going to put one point in Icicle. I'm going to max White Council, and I'm going to max High Alert and as, put as many points in Champion of the Light as I can. So those are kind of your standard builds for Gilgalad, and I just wanted to kind of share that knowledge out there. I also have Gimli. I got Gimli's unique maxed at five stars, two stars gold. Really love this weapon. I mean, this weapon truly unlocks the potential that Gimli has for you. Um, once you hit 100 focus, then he gets pursuit, which means he's going to cut through anyone with evasion. And as a damage dealing commander, that's huge. The rest of my items for him are purely either going to do one of two things. They're either going to increase the survivability of my units, or they're going to increase the damage on Gimli. The scale mail is perfect for this. Might focus, and then plus 15 defense to the melee. So I'm increasing melee defense. I only run melee on him. So, And then another 18 might to Gimli. It's going to increase his damage. So 36 might from the chest total between the trait and the base stat. Then I run the Brutal Helmet on him, which is going to increase his speed and more might, and then also give plus three army melee, which is really the reason why I love this helmet. The plus three HP to melee is huge because it stacks with my rope, which I'll show you in a second. Additionally, I'm working on maxing this helmet out so that I can maybe reap the benefits of this stun more often, which is a pretty cool thing to have Gimli be doing. The rope also gives another plus three army HP. So plus six total, more might, more focus, and then a light heal here. <clears throat> Gimli's a baller. So these two are my kind of my one-two punch. Then after them, I've got Aragorn, who I run with the night build. Battle axe with Flay, gotta have it on him. The quilted armor, this configuration is set so that he can mitigate Galadriel focus damage specifically for fighting light side. If I'm fighting dark side, I'm going to throw a superior hallmark on him. The full helm with blinding barrier. It's night build. If you know night build, you know what I'm talking about. And then like Gimli, I gave him the Hithling for more army HP, might focus, and a light heal. I will change the Hithling if I'm fighting a dark side opponent. Especially if that dark side opponent is Gundabad, because Gundabad's T4 unit is an orc. And Heathlane has a trait that increases your damage to orcs by 18% when maxed out. But since predominantly right now I'm fighting light side opponents, I go with Mend. After Aragorn, I have a sealed door. Increasing ranged, base stat ranged attack, plus another 9%. I give him Pursuit from Hunter's Mark on the Wizard's Fireworks. That also increases the base stat of ranged attack. The chest also increases the base stat of ranged attack and their defense based uh, upon this trait. More might, more speed. And then the Trapper's Hood. You might be surprised. You might be thinking that I will be running with the, the trait that inflicts madness, but... Since I'm playing Arnor, and I will use either Dunedain or the Rangers, I'm going with Ranged Vigor, and I like it on him, reducing the damage that all ranged units receive by 6%, because I run all ranged units on a seal door. I like this build on him. Also, I have Galadriel with the Carver. Smite trait required, maxed out. Focus. Really, the focus is what you want. The might's nice, but the focus is what you want on her. Same with the scale mail. Although, on this scale mail, I'm using melee vigor to reduce damage received by melee units by 6%, plus the defense and the focus. Arnor Cask, another 30 focus. 
and I'm mitigating stun for the first two rounds of every fight, 100% mitigating, no stuns to any of my allied units. And the worn out smoking pipe for more healing and more focus. So those are my top five. I also have a, a half decent Faramir that I'm working on. He does have the Madness Trapper's Hood, the Wizard Fireworks with allied ranged units damage dealt, Elven Dirk, more range damage dealt, might speed focus, and his unique for all the reasons why you want it. If you need to know what those are, you need to go watch a video of Faramir. My seventh commander is Gandalf the Grey, also running an Elven Dirk to increase his ranged damage. I put the Pursuit Harp on him. And he inflicts Madness. And then the Hunter's Skin. Range, 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 range. So if you look across the portfolio of my seven top my top seven PvP commanders, this guy's army damage. This is a DD damage. DD. Army. DD. Army. Army. Ranged, ranged. DD, DD, ranged. Three ranged. One elf. Then three DDs. So I have different tools for different jobs. Anyway, I'll talk about what all that is in different videos, if I haven't already. How does that affect my conscription habits and what I consider to be best practices? If you look across the scope of my barracks right now, I'll explain to you. Well, Bree Riders are pretty much a free gimme when you're playing Arnor because you can just make um, the building that you need to conscript Bree Riders plus the rangers. So I use rangers on Faramir or Isildur. However, since I'm fighting mostly Lothlorien, they have March Wardens, so right now I'm not really using the rangers so much. I'm using Dunedain to replace them. Since I use a lot of Sentinels, I have a lot of Sentinels. I use Sentinels on Isildur. I use the Sentinels on Gandalf. I use Sentinels on Faramir. I use Sentinels on Gilgalad. So I need lots of Sentinels. I almost always have them on Conscript. The only reason why I don't right now is because I have a bank of 8,700 of them and all the commanders that I need to have filled with them have them. And I have more pressing needs at the moment. Sharpshooters. I use Sharpshooters on Isildur, Gandalf, and Faramir. Cataphracts. That's my tanking unit for Gandalf. I might use it for others. Sometimes I'll throw them in with uh, Gladriel if my Bree Riders is running low, but right now I'm doing okay. So uh, I'm only using them as a tank on Gandalf right now. Guards of the, of the Citadel, they only get used on Galadriel. She has about 4,600 on hers, so having 4,700 here, if I lose all my guards of the tower, if all of them get killed dead, I can replace them instantaneously, one fight. That is how I think in terms of how many units do I need? How many fights can I have where if I get my ass completely handed to me, I can just replace all those units instantaneously without batting an eyelash? Of course, I don't have a backup after that, but still, that's how I think. Ram Riders, 1700. I only use them on Gimli. I use 1100 on uh, Ram Riders on Gimli and 5000 Guardians on Gimli. So as you can see, I have enough here that if Gimli gets completely wiped, if all of these units are killed dead, I can just replace them instantaneously. Preferably, since he's one of my top two comms, I try. I would like to have it myself in a position where I can replace them twice. So idealistically, I would have a bank of 10,000 Guardians plus the 5,000 sitting on him, and then the Ram Riders would have 2,200 sitting in here uh, plus the 1,100 that he's using. Bow Knights. I use 750 Bow Knights on Gilgalad and 2,500 Heralds on Gilgalad with 4,000 Sentinels. That's the build that I like right now. That's the configuration. That's the ratio that I like on him right now. And I'm not going to talk about why because I'm going to take up too much time. 
but as you can see i have a good bank of heralds sitting here i could replace his heralds three times and not bat an eye i can replace his bow knights two times after these get done conscripting and not bat an eye i can replace his sentinels two times and not bat an eye i need more dunadines so that i have a bank for a sealed door Right now, I'm using 2,600 Dunedain on a sealed door with 2,400 um, Sentinels and 2,400 Sharpshooters. Knights. I build Knights only for Aragorn. It's the only unit I use on Aragorn. It's the only unit he needs. Right now, at level 44, with Military Academy 10, he can have 3,450 Knights. So I tried to keep a bank of 3,450 knights. Today was a busy day, so I don't have that bank currently available, but I will work on that. You might be wondering, why do I have 2,800 marksmen sitting here? Well, if I run out of bow knights, I'll go to marksmen as my third unit on Gilgalad. And that's how I think in terms of setting up my barracks based upon the commanders that I have. I hope you found this video to be interesting and insightful. If you have any questions, feel, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Comments, leave them below. Feedback, reach out to me on Discord or in game. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I appreciate it, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Cheers.